GT3. Welcome back to the GT3. Welcome back to the GT3. Really bad news. I just dropped my phone out of the window of my car. I know it's been a little while since we featured this car, namely because, well, first of all, I haven't been in the country that often, but also Trading 212 have essentially donated a 991 GT3 RS to the channel for us to use for road trips and things like that, so I have been spending some time in that car. But right now, the uh, GT3 RS I've left in Europe because there's lots of road trips planned with that car, and it's a left-hand drive car, so for the time being, it makes sense being there because it will be back. But now we're back home, and we're in the 991 GT3, which for the last, I would say, nine months, really, has essentially been my daily driver. And when I say daily driver, it recently just clicked over to 18,000 miles. Now, in the realm of normal cars, 18,000 miles, you're just getting going, you're scratching the surface, but for whatever reason, and I still don't know why this is, but the supercar market, the sports car market, high mileage is like 10,000 miles. Now, if you go online and look for a 991 GT3 for sale second hand, you'll notice that A, this would stand out like a sore thumb, <laughs> and B, the majority of cars for sale are between, like, honestly, I've seen some at 900 miles. 900 miles! Who even bought that? What was the what was the point? And okay, these things hold their value well, and in the early days, they actually went up in value quite a lot. But I wouldn't class it as the, the kind of car that you want to invest in. So who's bought a GT3? Like, the pinnacle of driving Porsches and thought, I'll stick it in the garage. Let's do 900 miles and park it in the garage. <laughs> Seriously, the pleasure in these cars is wringing its neck. It's road trips, it's track days, it's sharing experiences with friends, it's sticking on shark work exhaust <laughs> and saturating your earbuds in that. I mean, what a sound. We are in a generation now where naturally aspirated engines, they're a dying breed. It pains me to say these words, but the reality is the world is going turbocharged. Of course, we're getting some fantastic performance out of these turbocharged engines, but there's something that affects you deeper. Petrol heads, we know it's not always about going 10 tenths. It's about the way a car makes you feel. And the, there's nothing like a naturally aspirated engine, particularly a, a high revving one like this, to just set you alight. Now, the mindset of a lot of owners of these cars and special cars in general is that winter comes, the road conditions get a bit crap, and it's like, okay, let's park it in the garage, see you in spring. And I totally disagree with that. It's a car, and they are special, but I think it's important that the market in general breaks out of this mindset of look after the mileage, you know, detail it every Sunday, park it in the garage. Look, if we break out of that mindset, it will do everyone, the whole wider market, a favor because people will actually be able to enjoy and drive their cars and not feel guilty putting miles on them. The best thing about putting miles on is your experience with these cars, the grin-inducing fabulousness that is getting up to 9,000 revs in this thing flapping a gear and it just hammering home with that next cog. I mean, as much as I'm trying to describe how awesome it, it is, the attack on your senses is, I would deem, almost priceless. 
Now, of course, there is a little bit of controversy that surrounds this car, and I've noticed the general vibe is that this topic has actually died off a lot lately, but you'll remember that when this car launched, the automotive market and just people who are in the market for these cars were up in arms because there was no manual gear stick. Now, it's funny me saying this now because, as I mentioned, I haven't heard this chat for quite some time, um, but w when it launched, people were like, what, a GT3 with no gear stick? What are we gonna do? Like, the world is over. It's horseshit. <laughs> it's so good. This gearbox is so good. It's amazingly fast. It gives you some really tactile feedback. But, of course, what I'm talking to you about right now is what it's like living with this car. Well, of course, when you're in town, when you're on longer motorway journeys, when you're stuck in traffic, or you're, or let's be face it, you just generally can't be asked. A gearbox like this is exactly what you want. I understand if you do want to save that car for a special occasion and you want to immerse yourself more in the driving experience and being one with the car and all that jazz, fantastic. But as a daily, as something that you don't want to have to think twice about getting in. And this sounds trivial and, and a bit like man up, but I spent quite some time with a 997 GT3 RS. And the gearbox on that, while it's absolutely phenomenal, it's very precise and it is quite demanding of the driver that you get it right. You've got a heel and toe. You've got to manage the engine and transmission speed perfectly for it to be a seamless experience. And you don't always want that. You don't want that every day. So yeah, that's why this thing here, this little stick, while most of the time I do drive it in manual, and when I mean manual, it doesn't change gears for me. I do use the paddles. Sometimes I just want to do this. And yeah, of course, on top of all that, this car also has a particularly special place in my heart because its entire life has been a YouTube car. From day one, the collection day, the day that I got in this car for the first time, and of course, the day I wrapped it. Now, people who have subscribed to this channel after that event, this car is actually GT Silver. Yeah, it's a silver car. I had it wrapped. The wrapping experience was fantastic. It was a funny one because I was only supposed to have it wrapped for one week. Well, that was the original idea anyway. I was just going to get it wrapped uh, while I went down to Monaco for top marks because when you go down there, things are always a little bit OTT. And I thought, you know, for one week, let's get the car wrapped. And then when I bring it back, I'll take it back to silver because I love that silver. And then when I saw it, I fell in love with it in this stunning matte metallic blue. Signature Group did an amazing job of actually wrapping this car. It was such a big project. Yeah, so really, this is through and through a YouTube car. Its whole life, every road trip, every adventure, every upgrade and tweak with this car has been online. Um, so, yeah, that comes back to me. What am I going to do with it now that we have access to the... Uh, trading 212 GT3 RS. Well, I'm not planning on selling it just yet because of all of these adventures and time that I've spent with it, I'm really attached to it. It's become like a friend, a reliable, very fast, loud friend. Um, yeah, so the memories that I have associated with this means that I don't want to sell it just yet. And of course it is an all-round fantastic car. Having driven this as a daily driver for 18,000 miles, road trips, track days, and everything else. I also take this thing, put a work in it, I travel down the motorway, I do shopping in it. I think if people were to adopt that mindset that actually this car isn't as impractical as it might first seem, I think more people would actually be inclined to own them. Because, let's face it, most people treat these cars as a special occasion. It's a treat car. It's something that you have earned and worked yourself up to. And I totally agree with that. Do not detract from how special this car is. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't own one because it's a terribly impractical thing. We're not talking a sunny Sunday driver car like an Aerial Atom or something like that. It's still a great car. Now, my spec has detracted a little bit from some of its practicality because, well, the back's filled with a roll cage. But if you have these carbon seats, they fold forward, and I found myself that I can fit plenty of bags in the back. But the boot in this thing as well is pretty huge.
experience. I guess the best way of summing up what it's like to live with this car is that 20 second segment of just hooning a GT3. For me, the whole reason that this channel started, the whole reason that it exists, is because moments like that, when you're in the zone, you're in the moment, you lose yourself in the driving experience. My channel started because I ultimately wanted to share that with more people. I'm very, very fortunate in that I managed to find myself owning these fantastic cars and I just wanted to share it and I'm hoping the best way of doing that is by sticking these cameras in these cars and just immersing you in that experience. So for all of its beautiful looks, its practicality, its fantastic steering feel, its acceleration, its grip, nothing quite encapsulates living with not just this car but any supercar as it is in that moment where you just get lost in driving it and ultimately for me that is exactly what it's all about so to summarize what it's like living with a 991 gt3 it's absolutely fantastic as always guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time ciao